think he owned was such a own because it ain't gonna work. <laughs> Get involved with him, let him handle it. And he'll give you that peace. Like Isaiah 26, 3, he says, I'll keep them in perfect peace whose mind has stayed on me. Amen. And I guarantee you, I don't care what's happening around you, you got your mind on him. He's gonna bring, it may be terrible, but he's going to bring you through it. I, I, I just can't forget what he told me one day years ago when I was, well, I was growing up in the Lord, and I still am growing up in the Lord, learning every day. But I was mumbling and grumbling and times were rough. And God spoke to me and said, Son, I never promised you the valley of the shadow of death was going to go away. I said you'd be able to walk right through it. <laughs> says, the problem with you, you, you're holding my hand, but you got me behind you and telling me, come on up here when I need you. <laughs> I'll call you. Let me get in front of you. <laughs> and I'll take you through it. I said, hallelujah, go ahead. <laughs> From that day on, He just leads me through it. Symbols, praise Him upon the high sounding symbols. Let everything that at the breast praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. So everybody got breath, say, eh? Praise the Lord. The Lord. <laughs> People will remark because why? It's a remarkable experience to become a born again Christian. And if somebody's not, if somebody says, "Yeah, I'm a Christian. I'm a Christian," you know, and you're like, "Hmm," you sure look the same to me. You're sure doing the same things. Your conversation has to. Your conversation's going to change. Amen. Because what's in your heart is going to drive your thoughts. It's going to drive what you say. And with Christ in your heart, you're going to be hungry for Jesus. You're going to be hungry for the Lord. And you're going to, and you're going to have the compassion to reach out to the lost. Right? I mean, because why? Why? Why do you want to reach out to the lost? Why? Because they're going to hell. They are going to hell. And you don't want that for anybody. You don't want that for anybody, man. And I'll tell you, some, 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 some worry your most... Uh, Emotional. Some of them, some of where your most engaged conversation comes as Christians, and I know this for myself, and I'm speaking for myself, that that, that I really get agitated and animated when I'm in conversations or I'm seeing somebody doing what I was doing. I really get afraid for them, you know, because I was corporate Johnny sales guy, man. I, I could sell. I could sell. And when I see somebody in the Christian community out there selling. And no one, and I can, and I got the radar, baby. That's that, that's a, that's a that's a worldly agenda. That ain't a Christian agenda. When I see that, I go nuts, <coughs> right? Because I know what they're doing, and, and they're going down that path of not being saved, but trying to manipulate for their benefit. I mean, that's all of what the television stuff's about. Come on! Every time you see them asking for money, what's up with that? So you see, Mike Murdoch's going to hell. He's going to be the first one at hell's door, I'm telling you. Sow your seed. Sow $1,000. What, you don't have to put it on your credit card? Give me a break. Where in the Word of God does it say seed, seed is money? It is money. Seed is the Word of God. Amen. And I'm telling you what. Sow your seed. And, and, and what's the whole pitch behind that? Sow your seed and God will repay you 10, 20, 100 fold, right? What is that, covet? What do you want? I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna uh, you know, it, it, it's God's Vegas casino. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm betting on red. Here's my, here's my hundred bucks on red. And you're telling me he's God. Of course, I'm gonna get a thousand. Give me a break. It's covet, man. That's covetousness. You just think about that. You're coveting what they're trying to. You're coveting the greed. It's pitching greed. It's pitching greed. It's pitching. I want more. I want more. How am I gonna get more? I give it to God. God's the ultimate bookie. No, He's not. He's God. He's serious. You're either saved, 
You either surrender your life to Jesus Christ, you either turn your life over to Him, or you are going to hell forever. And, you know, I don't care if, I don't care if anybody believes me. I don't. I know what's the truth. So people say, oh, there's multiple ways to God, and you know, this whole, this whole unity, church unity, right? You know, let's all unify as, 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 as people who believe in God. So you got Buddhists and, and Muslims and, 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 you know, all these people coming together. Oh, let's just all worship together. Well, fine. You can do whatever you want. Y'all are going to hell if Jesus Christ ain't your Lord and Savior. There's one way to heaven. No, I just said... Oh. <laughs> Absolutely. There's one way to heaven. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. Jesus is the only way. You can do whatever you want. That's the truth. And everybody will find out one day. They'll... You've been born again. You're a preacher. Because what did Jesus tell us? Go out, right? Tell the world. Go tell them. Everybody wants to go to heaven. Luke 6, 46. Why you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Huh? I'm born again. I'm Christian. I go to church. So what? You go to church, so does the devil. <laughs> Amen. He goes to all of them. Don't do him no good, does it? Well, I sit in church. Well, you can sit there all you want. Go straight to hell, too. That's all you do. These preachers on TV, how many times have you heard them? Send me your money and I'll go for you. Where's that in here? Where's that in here? Send me your money, I'll go for you. You just sit there. Oh, boy. That's the biggest lie ever been told. God wants to and will use you right where you are. Right where you are. On your work, wherever you go, all you and I have to do is be willing and obedient. And if you love the Lord and you really say, when people say things, you can't help but come out with Jesus or God or something about Him. My wife and I, she wanted to go shopping over here. I love her. She shops for three hours and don't buy nothing. <laughs> That's a good woman. Yeah. She's been doing that for 35 years. <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. Yeah. <laughs> she shops and looks. <coughs> oh, I like this. I, like. I said, well, buy it. No, I don't need that. I, I can. Yeah, three hours we're in here walking through stores, shopping. You ain't bought a cotton picking thing. So we go eat over here at the Pizza Hut. And the lady came to the table. I guess she was getting off, so she left. And then another young lady took care of us. And she brought us the pizza and everything. And when, and when she comes to, to the table, she says, and if y'all need anything else, just raise your hands. And I'm, I'm serious. My hands went straight in there and so did my wife's. Straight in there. She says, what you want? I said, oh, I thought you told us to praise the Lord. She says, oh, yeah, let's do that. And she did it. <laughs> and we start talking about Jesus. She believes in God. She, you know, she, she's all screwed up as far as, you know, what, what all that looks like. And we're talking yesterday. I don't know how we got on the subject, but she said uh, she was watching one of these paranormal shows. And she said, do you ever watch that show? And I said, no. I don't watch it. She said, what do you mean? She said, you used to love those shows. You used to watch them all the time. I said, yeah, well now I know what they are. I don't want that stuff going in my spirit. You know, I have enough to deal with in the spiritual realm without adding to it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't have a desire to watch that stuff. It's not of God. Don't want it. You know, and she's like, man, I just don't understand that, you know. And then we got onto some other stuff, and she said, I don't know, we're talking about uh, some meditation and stuff. And, and I said, all that New Age meditation, that's the devil. We don't want to get involved in that stuff. That stuff's nasty. 
you know, you get involved with that and you open yourself up to all kinds of stuff. And she said, oh, no, I just, I thought meditation was just thinking about nice stuff. I said, well, there's different kinds of meditation. You know, the Bible says to meditate on the Word of God. But when you're doing all that New Age meditation garbage, you're, you're really opening yourself up to some stuff. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And everybody makes a joyful noise. Amen. Amen.